I would like to talk about zoning and mixing loops in uh, HVAC systems. And there's a number of main adva advantages to uh, using mixing loops and thereby zone up uh, HVAC system. And one is that with mixing loops we are able to run with different temperatures in the system. Uh, the different parts or zones in the system does not necessarily require the same temperature and we can deal with that with mixing loops. Another advantage is that we have the opportunity to go with different uh, control modes in an HVAC system. And each time we have a mixing loop, we can have a new uh, control mode. And in that way, we're not uh, dependent on the control mode that we have on, on, main, on main pumps. And thirdly, by using mixing loops in an HVAC system, we can keep down our uh, pressure differences in a system which makes the system uh, easier controllable and also saves you money. But firstly let's uh, take a look at an HVAC system here on the whiteboard. So this system is actually uh, divided into zones already. We have one, two, three zones here, and we also have a unit and a uh, unit here. And um, the performance of the system in the, in, in this, in the different zones uh, is uh, controlled by the uh, the valve. This is a modulating valve. This is also something that's very typical for HVAC systems. So they open and close according to the, uh, to the uh, performance or the desired performance of the system. Um, however, in a system like this, you are not able to control the temperature. Uh, that means that you are dependent on the same temperature all over in the system. That means if we have uh, 80 degrees here from the boiler or whatever, you can, uh, you have the same temperature in the whole system. So there's no opportunity to change, uh, to change that. But normally, uh, radiators, floor heating, and air handlers, they need different temperatures. So how do we do that? And a very simple and uh, well-known uh, way to, to achieve this target is to, to introduce uh, the mixing loop. And with a mixing loop, mixing loop you can actually uh, you can adapt the flow temperatures. And let's make that. And for a mixing loop, basically consists of, of three parts. A control valve, pump, and uh, a, a bypass or a shunt. So let's put that on everywhere. And the floor heating system. And this one is upside down. So, the control valve still has, has the same functionality as before. It still opens and closes according to the, to the uh, performance uh, in the system. But when it closes, some of the chilled water or cold water is actually forced back into the flow pipe now. So by opening and closing uh, this valve, you, we can adapt the flow temperature to, uh, to whatever uh, we would like to, to have it to be. And uh, we can also uh, run the pump uh, with more or less speed. So we can do both now. We can both, uh, we have a system with a variable flow in the zone and also a system with variable temperature in the zone. And that gives uh, a better uh, controllability in a system. And also here, on the, on the floor heating system, we have an opportunity to reach the desired temperature of, of this system, which is typically 40 degrees Celsius. Another thing we can achieve by introducing mixing loops in an HVAC system is that it allows us to, uh, to introduce a weather compensation. And that means that we, uh, when running the system, this heating system for example, uh, we adapt the flow temperature in the system accordingly to the outside temperature. So when we have a high outside temperature, 
then we can go with a low flow temperature in the system. And if we have a very low outside temperature and high uh, uh, temperature loss or energy loss from the building, then we have to go with a high uh, uh, flow temperature in the system. And uh, most of the time, we are actually allowed to go with a relatively low uh, flow temperature. That means also that we can achieve some energy savings because uh, the energy loss from pipes uh, and the system in general with low temperatures is, is less, uh, is, is, is decreasing with the temperature. So let's talk about control modes. Uh, now we have added uh, four mixing loops in this uh, system. And now we also have the opportunity to run with different control modes in the system. We're not dependent on the same control mode or the control mode of the main pumps. Now we can actually let, for example, this one run with uh, constant pressure, while this one and this one are running with um, a proportional pressure. By introducing mixing loops in this system, we are able to reduce the main pump size and also uh, the pressure provided by the main pumps. And that means we are able to reduce the uh, differential pressure in the system as well. And one of the, uh, the problems with, uh, or typical problems with HVAC systems is that, is that we have too high differential pressure uh, close to the pumps. Because pumps, they are designed to maintain a constant different pressure at the furthest point and that means that here close to the pumps we have too high pressure and by using uh, smaller pumps providing less uh, pressure then we, we reduce the delta P here which gives a better uh, controllability of the system. So let's recap what we learned. Uh, zoning of an HVAC system with mixing loops gives us a number of advantages. One is that we can run with different temperatures in the system. We not only depend dependent on the uh, temperature provided by the boiler. Secondly, we can run with the different control modes in the system. That means that every time we have a mixing loop, we can have a new control mode. Thirdly, uh, with mixing loops in a system, we are able to reduce the overall uh, differential pressure in the system because we have more pumps. And that's of course an advantage because uh, it gives us an increased uh, controllability of the whole system and it also saves us energy and money.